So in this problem, we need to determine the equation of a parabola such that the focus of the parabola is at point A, comma, 0 and vertex is at the point A prime, comma, 0. Let us begin. So we'll try to understand the problem graphically first. We begin by considering a straight line. And on this line, we are going to consider two points. Let's say one of the points is denoted by V with the coordinates A prime, comma, 0. And the other point is denoted by F with the coordinates a comma zero so this means that v is going to represent the vertex of the parabola and f is going to be the focus of the parabola now by definition any line which contains the coordinates of the vertex and the focus of the parabola is going to be referred to as the axis of symmetry line now we're going to consider another point let's call it point a and the Position of A is chosen in such a way such that the distance of point A from the vertex is exactly equal to the distance of the focus from the vertex. So these two lengths are exactly equal to each other. And, and once we have chosen the point A, let's say the coordinates of point A are A comma B. And we're going to pass another straight line through this particular point A and it will be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry line. So this uh, line, which is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, is going to be referred to as the directrix of the parabola. Our goal will be to obtain the equation of the directrix. And once we have the equation of the directrix, we can use that equation along with the focus of the parabola to obtain the equation of the given parabola. Let us begin. So we know that the vertex is the midpoint of the line segment joining A and F. Now, uh, here I have chosen the coordinates of A, A, B. This might create a confusion because we already have A chosen here. So let's call it A1, B1. So here we have vertex V, the being the midpoint of the line segment joining A and F. So here what we can do, we can use the midpoint formula. That means we're going to take the sum of the X coordinates of uh, point A and point F. So A1 will get added to A. We're going to divide it by 2. This is going to be uh, the x-coordinate and then we're going to take the sum of the y-coordinates of a and f. So we'll add b1 and 0 divided by 2 and this is going to be equivalent to the coordinates of the vertex. That's going to be a prime comma 0. So what we can do? We can equate the uh, coordinate. So a1 over a divided by 2, that's the x-coordinate, that will get equal, uh, that will be equals to a prime, which means a1 plus a will be equals to 2a prime and a1 will be equals to 2a prime minus a. Now we have the x coordinate of point a. Let's try to find out the y coordinate of point a as well. So b1 plus 0 over 2 that will be equals to 0. Now b1 is equals to 0. Now that means coordinates of point a that's going to be 2a prime minus a and coordinates of b a, the y coordinate will be 0. So now that we have coordinates of point A, let's try to find out the slope of the axis of symmetry line. We can easily find out that slope because we have the line passing through two points and the vertex and the focus and both of the coordinate values are given. So we'll assume that the slope of the uh, axis of symmetry line be M1 such that we can easily obtain the value of M1. All we have to do is take the difference of the Y coordinate in the numerator. So we have 0 minus 0 divided by the difference of the X coordinate in the denominator. We'll take A prime minus A. Now since there's a 0 in the numerator, that means slope of the axis of symmetry line is 0, which tells us that it is parallel to the X axis. So that means our uh, axis of symmetry line is parallel to the x-axis, which means that the directrix is going to be parallel to the y-axis. And any line which is parallel to the y-axis has got an undefined slope. If the slope of the directrix is undefined, then how do we define its equation? Its equation will be simply given by x equals to the point, uh, the x-coordinate of the point through which it passes, which is a1 in our case, so x will be equals to a1. Now, we have already obtained the value of a1. So, a1 is 2a prime minus a. That means the equation of the directrix line will be 2a prime minus a. Okay, so now we have the equation of the directrix line. We have the coordinates of the focus. We are now ready to obtain the equation of the parabola. So, to find out the equation of the parabola, we'll consider a point P. So P has the coordinates, let's say h comma k, and P is the, the locus of the parabola. Now, the position of the point P is chosen in a very specific way, such that if we join point P and point F, and also if we drop a perpendicular from point P 
on the directrix line such that it meets the line at m then the distance by definition pf will be equals to pm that's what defines a parabola so our goal will be to find the equation of the parabola from this equation here we can easily find out the length of pf because the coordinates of the endpoints are given we can use the distance formula so we'll take the square root and then in the square root we take the difference of the x coordinate so we'll start with h and from it subtract h we get h minus a whole squared added to the difference of the y coordinate so that's k minus zero whole squared so this will be equals to now we want to find out the perpendicular length pm now there is a standard formula to compute the perpendicular distance of any point from a given straight line so let's quickly go through the formula that we'll be using here to obtain the length of pm so here the perpendicular length pm can be used this formula so let's say we have a point p with the coordinates x1 comma y1 it is at a perpendicular distance from a straight line whose equation is given by its general form ax plus by plus c equals to zero then the perpendicular length can be obtained by taking the absolute value so here we take a times x1 so that means multiplying the coefficient of x of the straight line with the x coordinate of point p added to the coefficient of y which is b times the y coordinate of the point p plus the constant term of the straight line divided by the square root of the sum of the squares of the coefficient of x and y we're going to use the same formula in our case x1 comma y1 will correspond to h comma k and the straight line is given by which is the directrix in our case is given by this particular equation however let's try to rewrite the equation in its standard form so here we have x which can be expressed as 1 times x there is no y terms here but we can re-express it as 0 times y and we're going to transpose it to the left hand side to get a minus 2a prime equals to 0 this is going to be the constant term now that means our perpendicular distance will be now given by so we have 1 multiplied to h plus 0 multiplied to k plus the constant term which is a minus 2a prime divided by the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared. So let's uh, simplify. So here we're going to get the square root of h minus a whole squared added to k squared equals to the absolute value of h plus a minus 2a prime. Now we're going to square both sides. Squaring is going to give us h minus a whole squared plus k squared equals to h plus a minus 2a h whole squared so we need to expand it but let's use a trick here so here we're going to keep the left hand side as it is h minus a whole squared plus k squared however on the right hand side we're going to rewrite h plus a as h minus a however we don't have a negative a here we have a positive a so we need to add positive 2a to it so that means we have h minus a plus 2a minus 2a prime whole squared Furthermore, what we have h minus a whole squared plus k squared equals to now what we can do we can rewrite this as h minus a plus uh, 2a minus 2a prime so let's be another term so here we can expand it to get h minus a whole squared plus 2a minus 2a prime whole squared plus 2 times the product of h minus a times 2 times a minus 2 times a prime and on the left hand side we have h minus a whole squared plus k squared so here we can cancel out h minus a whole squared from both sides now we have k squared now for we're left with these two terms now from these two terms if we take 2a minus 2a prime as the common factor so that gets multiplied to so from the first term we have 2a minus 2a prime and for the next term we have 2 times of h minus a we'll get say 2 h minus 2a so here we can cancel out 2a and negative 2a so that's going to give us k squared equals to let's pull out 2 from uh, 2a minus 2a prime so we have a minus a prime multiplied to so here we have 2h minus 2a prime so if we pull out 2 we have h minus a prime so we get k squared equals to 4 multiplied to a minus a prime multiplied to h minus a prime we're almost there in the final step what we'll do we're going to replace the value of h with x and the value of k with y which is going to give us y squared equals to 4 multiplied to a minus a prime times x minus a prime so this is going to be the required equation of the
parabola with the conditions that the focus of the parabola will be at a comma zero and the vertex is at a prime comma zero.